And welcome to Africa's Travel in Daba, taking place at the Durban ICC. The best of the continent is right here for all travelers and those in the hospitality sectors to experience exactly what the continent has to offer. Joining me this morning, I have the city manager, Musa Mbele, to unpack for us not only this iconic uh, continent-wide exhibition, but also to talk a little bit about what Etewini has to offer. Musa, thank you so much for joining me. What an incredible showing. Every single year you pull out the stops. Yes. What were you trying to achieve for this year's Indaba for the continent? This year we were trying to, to showcase uh, Africa's biggest uh, travel event uh, taking place in the beautiful city of South Africa called Edeben. And uh, this year we've tried, we've pulled all the stops to ensure that uh, it becomes a significant and big. I'm happy to report that in terms of the exhibitors, we are oversubscribed by 100 visit, uh, exhibitors. And uh, we have increased the number of uh, visitors from 8,000 last year to 9,000 this year. So it is quite big. We are creating an opportunity, an environment for people to explore the African continent here in Durban. And we have a number of exhibitors from different countries. We have increased the number of countries uh, throughout the southern African continent and beyond uh, that are exhibiting here. It's fantastic. It's exciting. And what I've seen you've done this year, it's not only the countries, you've, you've quite done a, a broad representation. So each country has come with an entourage of offering from their countries. How have you ensured that you've given them the freedom to show up in their best colors? Yes, we wanted uh, to ensure that people experience diverse African cultures. People have come to showcase their music. People have come to showcase their cuisine. People have come to showcase different uh, tourism uh, products that take place within their countries. We didn't want to limit them. We, w we wanted them to express what happens in their countries and be able to, to market uh, their destination. And having spoken to a couple of them, they are saying this time around it's bigger and better. Mm, definitely. But um, when I look at this event, it yes. must mean a lot to the people of Durban. Uh, does it create huge am amounts of employment? Are these events important to showcase also what Teguini is about? Definitely. Definitely. It has um, increased the number of jobs, uh, the injection into the economy of the province. We have surpassed half a billion rands uh, uh, worth of injection into the KZN economy and the economy of Deben. A number of jobs have increased and uh, there is diversity of products that are on offer. So it is so significant because uh, people are experiencing this city in a manner that they've never seen uh, before. We have invested a lot in infrastructure to ensure that people have a memorable experience when they come in the city. But you have a big job to do in the city, right? Yes. Um, and it's part of the rege regeneration of yes. the city. How are you tracking on such an important and difficult task? It's easier to build than to fix. Yes. How are you doing the fixing? Yes. Do you see when uh, the post-apartheid cities uh, opened up for more people, uh, there was pressure, particularly on infrastructure and buildings. As a result, most uh, cities experienced somewhat of a decay. Uh, what we are doing now under the Inner City Regeneration Project is to regenerate, investing in upgrading uh, a public realm, dealing with the bad buildings in the city, sorting out different land uses, ensuring that there is harmony uh, in different land uses to bring this city back on an international uh, map and we've got exciting programs. We have uh, divided the inner city regeneration into 18 different work streams covering issues of security, covering issues of upgrade of infrastructure across the board just to ensure that when people come to the center of Durban they experience how the Durbanites, the Zulus, the pride of the Zulus it, it is expressed here in the city. You have a unique value proposition, a, a deeply rooted cultural value proposition, yes. but you also have corporates and private investors that play an important part. How are they viewing partnership and how are you enabling it to operate as smoother in order to see the results? Because corporates are important, right? Yes. And private investment is important. Yes. To show that we 
we have a functional partnership. I can share with you that we are going to have uh, just over 3 billion rands. This is in the pipeline, worth of investment in the new hotels in the city. But over and above that, we've got a couple of billion rands of major projects, catalytic projects that are already taking place in, in this city. That can only come out of a good partnership that we've worked on over a number of years. And we, 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 we work with them throughout. We support them in terms of the regulatory approvals of their plans. We give them uh, financial incentives to ensure that uh, they come here. But we are still calling out for more. The city is ready to welcome more investors in it. Mm. And, you, and you're in competition because you need to be attracting a lot of major events, uh, whether it be in sports, in music, uh, in, you know, uh, to, to, they've got options of where else to go. How are you starting to say this is where you need to be coming, whether you're a sports event or a concert? How are you starting to engage and make, make headway in making that happen for the city? This concept of Durban being, being South Africa's playground is really playing out in the major events uh, that are lined up for this city. We've got uh, a July horse racing event, we've got the Comrades a Marathon. These are signature events that are strictly uh, for this city. And we are beginning to also identify a couple of other new events that we are, growing, that we are going to grow, which are also going to become big and become signature events for the city. Um, I'm happy to, to say that over and above the Comrades Marathon, the, the July horse racing, we are also going to be having what we call Ocean Indaba. It's a new event that we are still grooming, but we are also uh, going to have, this one is confirmed on the 18th to the 21st of July, we are going to have resurgence uh, conference where we are going to have the Americans uh, the American investors coming to Durban uh, to share um, investment opportunities on the other side and we are also going to be sharing with them uh, other opportunities where they want to invest in, in this city. It's big, it's not only about a Durban, it's also about a number of uh, uh, cities in the sub-Saharan uh, uh, continent of Africa. And they mustn't forget to say a Durban, right? A Teguin. A Teguin. Add the A before Teguin. Yeah. But you have to put money behind this project. You have to put money behind the regeneration and behind a Teguini's uh, development. Sure. How much is being allocated and what for you is priority? Right. Um, if you look at the um, investment in infrastructure that we have already done, We've spent about 700 million rands already on upgrading our water and sanitation infrastructure. We are planning to spend another billion uh, rands uh, dealing with other uh, aspects of infrastructure like the widening of the roads, particularly in the inner city. But over and above that, uh, beyond the inner city, we have like uh, one of the projects that are here are going to be spoken about here. We are spending over 700 million rands in the west town uh, part of the city so it's a couple of billions of rands that we are going to be injecting but the returns are huge we calculated the impact of the catalytic projects the last time we counted we were sitting at over 30 bill, sorry 13 billion rands in terms of uh, the investment as a result of those infrastructure upgrades mm. so you've got a tenure to play yeah. you and the mayor what are your ambitions you know when all is said and done what do you want to say you've done and left for Durban we we created a, a vision for this city to become uh, Africa's most livable and caring city that idea of being the caring city is still on course our investment in infrastructure to ensure that people receive uh, services we are still on course. Unfortunately, we were exposed to a number of climate change induced uh, disasters like floods, but we are clawing back from that. So uh, we are still on course to ensure that our people uh, receive the best uh, services. More importantly, we are very uh, big on investing in security. We want to ensure that as uh, Durban becomes South Africa's playground. When people come here, they feel safe. 
So we are employing more metropolis, we are buying more vehicles, uh, we are investing in the fourth industrial re revolution kind of uh, uh, security uh, technology. And what we've basically done, we've, we've um, uh, also ensured that we create job opportunities for young people to participate in this space. So we are very proud of what we've done so far uh, in attaining vision at 2030 of making this city the most caring and livable. And maybe the most important question you've already touched on just a little bit, it is climate change. It's here, and it's not just climate change, but it's also the management of the city that allows us to continue to, to, to work with nature. You know, the rains are going to keep on coming. Uh, the infrastructure is so critical. Let's go back into what is the strategy around adapting towards climate change, just ensuring that the city is managing what is to come, because it's, it's, it's going to be part of our reality. One thing, Zanele, that we pride ourselves in is that, and I can say this boldly, because it's the work that we've done over the last 20 years. We are the pioneers in, 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 in the work of climate change adaptation. Uh, we started many years ago to predict what would happen. And uh, that has now, chicken ha have come home to roost. Mm. So the impact of climate change is here. And we, we have the climate change strategy. We also have the climate change um, action plan. So uh, if we didn't have those plans, the impact of those climate change induced events would have been worse. Uh, so wha what we developed as the strategy is even beginning to, to show results now. But having learned from the research that we've done over the years, we are also saying uh, to claw back from the impact of uh, floods, we are building back better. So as we build the infrastructure, we bring in place those uh, strategies and ethos of adaptation. That's why we are dealing with it uh, so well. Otherwise, it could have been disastrous. Mm. Thank you so much for that. Clawing back better, that was the theme for last year. Yeah. And Africa's travel in Endeavour this year, really talking about Durban, the warmest place to be. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking us with you on the journey. And we'll probably catch you in 2025. Thank you. Thank you. And that was the city manager of Eteguini. Uh, Musa Mbele. Thank you so much uh, for joining us for this conversation. Stay tuned. I come back to delve deeper into key projects taking place at Teguini. I come back and have a conversation around what the strategy is for the chambers, for business and for investors. You're watching CNBC Live from ICC in Durban with me, Zanella Morrison. And this is the warmest place to be in Durban. Thank you for joining me. I'm at the Durban ICC. It's time for the Africa Travel in Daba. We're going to delve into a credible conversation to talk about travel and tourism uh, for South Africa, for the continent. We're going to hone in on KZN itself and its value offering even further from a, from a business chamber perspective and also look at investments. And we also have an opportunity to go straight to the township and talk about township boutique hotels. You're watching CNBC. Thank you for joining us for the conversation. And, and perhaps to start us off, Chivua, paint the scene for us how important it is to bring everybody in the continent to a space like this to showcase what we have to offer. Well, it's very critical uh, when we look at uh, you know, travel and tourism in the African continent. Uh, it is a key industry. Uh, it employs a lot of young people. Uh, it also has a huge impact in the economy of the continent. And here in South Africa, uh, we are a country that tourism is probably the highest uh, when compared to other countries uh, in, within the continent. So it's very significant. Uh, the fact that we're having Africa Travel in Dava here in Durban, uh, the fact that uh, we are recovering from COVID, the numbers are looking better. 
Uh, we still have a long way to go, uh, but having events such as this, it shows that we are ready for business. It shows that Africa as a continent is ready to host mega events. And what's most special about this event is that we are here to showcase what we have to offer as a tourism industry within South Africa, within the continent. And I think it's, it, it's important that when we do so, uh, we show the world our capacity and our capabilities of hosting such events. So this is a momentous uh, you know, uh, you know, occasion for us. We are recovering, as I've said, but we need to make sure that we remain competitive. And we need to make sure that we're able to attract more events such as this to come to South Africa, to come to Durban. And we have to make sure that uh, as we do so, we, we focus on uh, uh, um, you know, improving you know, the city. We focus on making sure that our offerings uh, are you know, functional and people can be able to do more you know, when they arrive here on the ground. So this is important for us and it's a critical moment for us as South Africa to be able to showcase. Mm. And speaking of being able to show up, business is critical because the people that are exhibiting are businesses. Uh, Samantha Croft, you dealing with the chamber where businesses are coming and talking about uh, how they are rising to the occasion. Do you, do you see a good match between what we are offering and how businesses are able to respond to that and actually cater for international visitors and visitors, importantly, from the continent? Um, definitely. I mean, the Ndaba has been in Durban for, for many, many years. I mean, certainly even in the, the starting, when I started in my career. So um, there's a lot of excitement when we host events like this. We get the, the staff involved. As Chifiwa said, um, we employ a lot of youth. Uh, we showcase our diversity. We showcase cultures. I mean, I think it's the only the week of the, the year that we allow staff not to wear uniforms and they can wear their own heritage outfits. So um, business, certainly tourism business is, is certainly thriving um, during this week and uh, everyone's optimistic about what this Indaba can do for, for tourism to just drive business into, into Durban. Mm. And, and what's so beautiful about Durban, it's, it's richness of culture and who the people are and to what degree uh, does that maintain itself in, in, in businesses? So, uh, Pumza, you have a beautiful boutique hotel in the township. How have you managed to build that beautiful hotel and have you emerged in what we're talking about, which is this cultural essence of Durban? I think uh, the Octavia is in an envious position where we posi we're located. Uh, we at the Inanda Heritage Route. Uh, it is not only beautiful, but it is culturally rich. Uh, uh, and what the Devon Tourism has done to enhance uh, and, and create awareness about the route has been amazing, which allowed us to sort of enhance uh, the cultural exchange uh, with visitors or guests who come into the area. Uh, but more than that, um, we in turn employ um, and create jobs within the communities. The communities take pride in, in, in the culture that is in, in the area, therefore preserve it. So it's a multi-pronged approach where you come in, you create this beautiful and luxurious um, uh, establishment, create jobs, but they then in turn take ownership and pride in that and make the cultural exchange something so beautiful. Durban is, 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 a, is, a, is a growing uh, pot of, of, of businesses and, uh, and, and, and there's a middle class that's really also burgeoning and growing, uh, moving, moving into various parts of Eteguini. That's where we need investments to continue to support this very community of, of, of growing individuals. Uh, Carlos, from a, an investment point of view, where are you positioning your investments into Eteguini? I think firstly, we, we KZN based and Durban based. We've invested here for many, many years. I think the city of Durban most probably is very advanced in terms of what it offers investors. Um, catalytic projects, for example, that the city manager referred to previously, is driving billions of rands of investment. From our side, we're looking to grow in the outer west. Uh, we have quite a huge investment we're doing. I think the best example I could make is where Century City in Cape Town is all about what waterfall in Midrand is all about. Um, so we're creating our own niche in the Outer West. 
but we can't isolate ourselves from what's already there. And, and because Durban plays such a role in tourism, uh, we've got a lot of tourism packages we're also looking to do. So it's not only a retail uh, shopping experience. There are four fundamental issues that we're going to implement in West Town and to enjoy the beauty of West Town. Mm. Yeah, access to that information is so critical because when you drive through uh, through uh, Durban, I remember the sugar cane, you know, for miles and miles, and now you're making it a metropolis of integrated living. Um, uh, uh, Mayor, how are you going to keep what Durban is known for and be enhancing it further with the investments that you are gaining, uh, with the Chamber's uh, participation. How are you going to retain the essence of Durban? Because it's growing at a pace that is so fast, it's easy that it can run away with you. It is very simple. You have to roll out the red carpet and roll back the red tape and show that when businesses have uh, come to the city to apply for building permits, you facilitate that. That's what we've done. This project that Carlos is talking about is as a result of the facilitation that we've specifically done. But what is also critical, as an area that I'd like to share, and its effect, because it's backed up by a stats as A, that the economy of KZ10 has grown in the first quarter of this year. And um, it has grown by 35%. And um, I can assure you that a lot of that growth has got to do with the work that we are doing in this major urban center of this province. So we will continue to do it, we will continue to retain them and attract more. Mm. Did I call you president or mayor? I you have just promoted me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, city manager, uh, because we're talking to all the delegations you've had, you know, the names start to just flow to each other. Yeah. Uh, access, access, access. I mean, allow, Durban allows you to fly in easily. It's one hour from Johannesburg. You can also drive, and it's a quite a manageable drive. Are there more nodes of access being created around uh, Durban? I don't know if you want to tackle that. Look, I think air access, you know, into Durban is, uh, is quite critical. Um, it is a gateway to the province, you know, if you're flying in. Um, you know, I've had discussions, you know, over the past, uh, you know, few days here at Indawa, you know, on how do we work together from the private sector point of view with Durban Direct, uh, you know, which incorporates, you know, the likes of Divet Trade and uh, Tourism Peasant and, of course, the city of Durban. I think we need to increase frequencies into, into the city. But in order for us to increase frequencies into the city, we need to make sure that we have offerings, you know, that are a part, so that when people arrive here, they're able to do the things that they want to do. Uh, you know, Durban has, you know, the longest beachfront. We need to make sure that that beachfront is accessible. Uh, it's safe, as the mayor have said. We need to make sure that people feel safe and they're able to go around. We need to invite entrepreneurs, you know, to come here, uh, those that are in the restaurant space, uh, you know, to really redesign the cuisines. Uh, and, you know, the whole issue around, you know, the regeneration of the city, you know, entrepreneurs are the ones that are going to bring that, you know, spirit of the newness and bring the new products into, into the forefront. And we need to make sure that all our, you know, hospitality offering, our hotels, Samantha is here, there are lots of products, you know, within, you know, the city center. Uh, we need to make sure that those are, you know, top notch. We need to bring, we want our event back to where it used to be and even more, and we want to invite more international tourists to come here. The water is warm here, and we want people to be able to come here and swim and to be able to experience a whole lot of things, including culture. So from, from access point of view, you know, from our side, we want more flights direct into the event, whether it's coming from China, whether it's from the UK, whether it's from the US, we need to make sure that uh, we are working together, and from a private sector point of view, we'll make sure that we put together packages to explore Devon and beyond, going into the Northern KZN, going into the Drakensberg and of course to the south in the township you know economy as well from the tourism point of view will be right so that's important access means more tourists more jobs more impact into the economy and because you also warm nearly all the time yes. so you should be on holiday in Durban all the time yes. but Samantha I'm going to give you the tough job of saying what stands in the way um, so we all know that Durban's had its challenges recently and I think we've, we've been um, hit by challenges over the last couple of years. So um, I think the, the tourism sector is quite resilient um, and it's not about complaining about what's broken or what's wrong but we've behind the scenes we've been working quite hard with the city um, on how we're going to fix it and, and how do we bounce back because as you say 
Um, it is, it is the warmest place to be. Um, there are not very many places in South Africa that can welcome tourists to swim in the sea in July. But then we've got to make sure, as Shafira says, that it's all working and we're able to offer the products. We've got world-class products. We've just got to make sure that we're able to deliver um, a world-class standard. Mm. If I, however, what also balances out coastal towns is also uh, uh, investments, uh, be it in manufacturing, you know, so other industries that also participate and help to, to, to build up the economy. How do investors, Carlos, see themselves operating in this environment? Because we'd love to live where we can also be on holiday, you know, after four. Are, are organizations and businesses seeing themselves establishing and growing in the region? Absolutely. I think Samantha touched on it. We, we had our challenges in the last couple of years, and we can't deny that. But the reality is, is that if you create an environment that the city sets for investors, um, I think the city manager referred to 700 million rand of bulk infrastructure going into the west, that enabled us to come along and invest 1.4 billion rand in the retail center. It came along that the new hospital is being built for 500 million and the Baldwin property groups investing now another 2 billion. So all of a sudden there's this knock-on effect that from 700 million, you've got nearly 5 billion rand of investment. And this has only been in the last 18 months because West Town only opens next year. So again, building into what I said area, uh, earlier, we can't isolate ourselves. We have to be part of Durban in the outer west. There are tourism packages there. Our main focus is really to focus on green tourism, sports tourism. Uh, and in that regard already, we're trying to highlight polo, um, as, uh, as a major event, equestrian events. We've got three events this year already that we've tied into, which is the South African National Youth Equestrian Championships, the KZN Polo Championships, and the World uh, Polo Cross Championships, all in July. So by that investment the city did, we were able to get involved with the Outer West to create tourism products for people to come and watch. So it's not only an investment in property, it's an investment in the social side as well and in the tourism side. Speaking of investment in, in, the, in the social side, uh, Pumza, when you had to, to do this, because you are an on-the-ground example of a micro version of these type of investments, how easy was it, and I'm hoping it wasn't just uh, luck that enabled you to achieve this? I mean, how easy was it for you to establish and what could be done better perhaps to enable more of your smaller sized businesses to thrive in this big journey? I think um, it's vision uh, to start with. Uh, we had a vision and we wanted to create something that is different. Understanding that um, tourists, when they go to township, um, they have multiple touch points. They not only want to experience the culture, but they also want to experience the softer side. If they're used to some luxuries, they want to experience the luxury. If they're used to some cuisines, they're not only going to eat the cuisine that is provided by the township. So they want something different. So you need to provide all those touch points. Uh, coming to your question, it's not easy. Um, we invested about 70 million rands into the project um, at Tafuleni Enanda, which is something that um, we are proud of but um, it created jobs uh, within the area. 90% um, it, it, of the people that are employed within the business are from the local community. So it is, it is something that is growing, it's still growing. We probably at the second phase of, of the project, we, we're still growing, uh, creating more destination-led opportunities within the establishment. Mm. And speaking of that, uh, Durban, Durban uh, is rich. I mean, people have a lot of money to spend, even those who live in Durban, right? It's it's not a it's 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 not a, a place where there's scarcity as much as you know in, in, in some other regions. Are you seeing people investing themselves into the regions as well? So are Durbanites committed uh, to 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 being to participate in in the future of Durban? Indeed, they are. Uh, for instance, uh, Carlos has just uh, um, highlighted the fact that he, he has a Durban-based company and the investment of about $4 billion that he's doing in the West, he has invested a lot more uh, that he's not uh, talking about over the last uh, 10 years. 
in this city. Um, so uh, people who invest in this city are the people who have passion for this place. They love it. You, you look at Southern Sun, uh, probably 80% of the hotels here, although they have a national footprint, but they are loyal Durban investors. They are investing in the hotels here. They are investing in our infrastructure. Even in, in the townships, uh, if you look at Octavia, for an example, they've identified beautiful, scenic uh, part of uh, the township or peri urban area and they've invested so much money because they have confidence in Durban. So we are very proud of these businesses. They are the lifeblood of the city and we want to continue to support them going forward. And you know where I know that there's a lot to be invested. Yeah. When you travel to Durban, you should see how the Durbanites are dressed for the plane. It's probably the only city where people still dress up to fly. Yes. Um, so it, it just look out for it, you'll actually see it. Yeah. Um, it does it, is it matched by skills? Um, if I could ask you, Samantha, do we have a good skill set to work with? Um, yes and no. Um, I think with the new Gen Z, we've got a lot of work to do because, um, you know, we, we have a saying in our industry, you've got to do your 10,000 hours and the new generation don't believe in that. They believe in qualifications and then straight to the top. But it's something that we're working on. And um, as the city manager said, you know, um, it's not all about the money um, and, and the actual cash investment. Um, a lot of what we do behind the scenes is investing in people and having different projects running. We, we have projects running that include homeless people that, we, that we're employing. So um, you've, got to, you've got to see into the future and, and try and address some of the, the issues we have now. And the only way to do it is, is long term and offer a long term solution. So um, I think a lot of our investment from a tourism perspective and with the chamber as well and um, with my other hat on with Southern Sun is investing in the people and, and uh, delivering on those skills. Mm. Chief, let's, let's, let's piggyback on that exact uh, uh, response from you. And I think it's, it's so true. We've got this huge youth population. Once they've got into hospitality, and another challenge we have is they don't like to stay in one place for, for very long. And retention is important for this industry. What are the other sectors that absorb and work with you know, in the value chain of, of, of the industry? Well, the value chain is quite extensive. Uh, you know, because you, you're going to have hospitality uh, where it's very intensive um, and th there are a lot of young people living here at Indara that graduated, um, you know, got their certificates, they've done so many different courses that need to be absorbed within the industry. And of course, you know, outside of the hospitality, you're going to have, you know, your car rentals, your airlines, uh, you know, from transport point of view, you know, even road transport and so forth and so on. So the value chain in itself is large enough to absorb various types of skills. We're probably one of the few industries that anyone can graduate from school and being able to enter, from accountants to those that have done risk management to those that are, you know, fixing things in maintenance and so forth and so on. So our value chain is quite extensive. Uh, one of the things that's quite important that we have identified is that with this extensive value chain and the fact that tourism in South Africa uh, is very important in terms of job creation. Uh, in fact, when, when in other sectors they talk about the just transition and so forth and so on, we look at tourism as a sector that can absorb those that may be affected by the just transition from uh, you know, the energy that mix that we have to renewable energy. So tourism is a solution for this country. We've been saying over the past few years that uh, we want to attract about 15.6 million tourists by 2030. And if we do so, we should be able to create at least 1.5 million new jobs, in addition to what we already have. But if we go to 21 million tourists by 2030 or 2035, we should be able to attract or create 2 million additional jobs to what we have. With 2 million additional jobs, we would have made a dent on the unemployment. And the city like Durban is quite critical in making sure that uh, you know, the infrastructure is right, in making sure that you know, there's new investment into the area, and to make sure that uh, we create events that a lot of South Africans and the people within the region and those that are coming from overseas are able to travel into the country. So we are very ambitious in terms of ensuring that tourism becomes a solution for some of the challenges that we have from unemployment you know, point of view. And we believe we can make a dent and we believe that this could be the place where a lot more people you know, will be coming into South Africa and make it their playground. We're starting to see that from the U.S. point of view. The U.S. market is, has really rebounded. 
they are coming into South Africa. What we want is that when they arrive in South Africa, they must travel to other regions as well. We don't want people to go to one place alone, and we want to make sure that people are there uh, for at least 10 days plus uh, so that they can go around the country. And Deb and KZN is critical. Uh, there's even a committee that we've put together now to say we want more tourists to come into Durban, into you know, KZN region. They should be able to enjoy what we enjoy as South Africans. And we will be very bullish on that mm. because we want the city to be one of the cities that's going to be looked at. Uh, when someone is in Miami, they need to be able to say, well, I'm in Miami, the next I'm going to Durban mm. because it's warmer there and the people are nicer. There's culture, there's great food. It's all these wonderful things that they can enjoy. I'll tell them when I get there and, and later on in the year. This is the place to be. Last year we had the aviation team talking about the importance of building the interconnectivity and the travel. Um, so maybe we'll come back to that. But what is key or, or for me is when you travel is the people that receive you. So, so South Africa has got one essence of warmth about its people. Um, am I correct? Uh, and, and Pumza, have you found that it's been easy to train people to host international guests in your, in your boutique? Uh, it has been fairly easy, not completely um, just a walk in the park, because um, when you are a five-star establishment, you need to deliver on that. And what's going to bring people back is the experience. Uh, it's not just it's a beautiful place, it's what they experienced when, in, when they were in that establishment. So we've invested quite a lot in, in training and, and the fact that we work with a lot of young people, most of the staff we have is below 35 years um, and 90% of the staff. So you are working with young people that don't have as much experience, so you needed to invest in the training and training just about how you receive guests and how you make sure they come back because that's our main aim. Um, also about the cultural experiences around the area because when they come in, they not only want to have amazing six course dinners and, and experience the scenic views, but you need to get them to experience uh, the surroundings. We've got a helipad and they can view um, the area in a helipad, for example, go through a, a 30 minute ride. So you need to have knowledge of the uh, area to be able to sell that. My eyes just opened up because yes, I was booked in the wrong place. Um, <laughs> I should have really been at the Octavia Boutique Hotel. Uh, there's no helipad where I'm staying, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, uh, Carlos, wow. I mean, when I think about just what it, what, what, what it means to be in Eteguini, um, the future is, you know, is, is, is awaiting. How do you see the, this evolution? I mean, do, can you see the vision, you know, uh, at, a, at, at the next level of where Eteguini is going to be? I think it's the investment side. We don't invest as business people to lose money. You don't go to a region or a city to put money in and think you're going to lose money. Um, and I keep on going back to what Samantha said, which is, is quite important. We've had our challenges, but we're coming out of those challenges. And even businesses that did leave Durban, they're all coming back. We must probably have got the biggest demand for logistics and warehouses right now, anyway. Yes, the Western Cape's got demand for residential, but we're coming back also with residential. And if you look at the north of KZM, the amount of development that's happened there as well, I think there's a strong belief about we're back, we're on the move. We are, and you know, we, we want to be on that because in our business, you can't be reactive, you've got to be proactive because the money we invest takes years of planning before. So while there were challenges happening, we were planning because we had belief in the city and today it will hopefully pay off for us in the next 10, 15 years. Sure, I, I really want to, uh, uh, you, you, you speak across the region, right? You, you speak to all the chambers, you work with all the travel, travel agencies. And Carolus is saying something so phenomenal about recovery. You know, we, we, all, we have challenges everywhere, Western Cape, Gauteng, we all have challenges. But this recovery and the spirit of this recovery, uh, perhaps um, as a city manager, you could maybe enca encapsulate how, where, where does that come from? Where does the essence of being able to fuel a recovery so well, you know, what would you pinpoint and say this is why we, we, we are going to be and we are good at recovering from our challenges? 
Yeah, as Samantha spoke about the resilience of the tourism sector, I want to speak about the resilience of Debenites, ordinary people in this city who have been battered by the floods because a lot of these challenges emanate from there. We are dealing with governance issues, but a lot of it is related to broken infrastructure, its impact on, on, on our beaches and stuff like that. Uh, the recovery has been enabled by the willpower of ordinary Debenites. Um, who, who played their role, who didn't fold their arms and waited for government uh, to do something, and we owe it uh, to them. And we, we, we don't want to disappoint them. And likewise, we understand our role is to provide an enabling environment for these people to, to put their money and make a profit. Um, that is the goal that uh, drives us, and uh, that is what has enabled us uh, to recover that we didn't want to, to disappoint the people that have taken a lurch and said they want to invest in the city. So the willpower of the ordinary Debenites, the investors, the resilience of our key economic sectors, even in the manufacturing sector in the South uh, Deben Basin, we've got big uh, automotive industries that have invested their money to say we are not going to wait for government. We know you, 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 you've got a big uh, social package to take care of. We, as company X and Y, we are going to spend so much uh, to meet you halfway. So it's the entire resilience uh, aspect that has made us recover so well. Mm. Chifu, I want to go through. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mbele. Uh, Chifu, I want to go back to I think the economic impact. We mentioned it quite early on in the conversation. Uh, what can this do for the GDP? Uh, of the country, or, or what is what, are, what is the impact it can make just to uh, thrive, to make the economy thrive? Well, you know, from tourism point of view, we've been, you know, impacting the economy. It's a direct impact. You know, for the past few years, even before COVID, uh, we've been at around three percent on average, uh, impacting the economy. And we're an industry that's almost uh, close to, uh, you know, five hundred billion rand. Now, we want to do more of that because. The indirect, or the both direct and indirect, uh, you know, impact on the economy can go as much as eight percent. If you look at other countries, uh, you know, that do tourism and that are doing very well in terms of attracting tourists into their country, they can get up to twenty percent. So we need to, to 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 have an uptick in terms of our impact into the economy, uh, you know, in a real terms. Uh, and the only way to do that is to ensure that uh, you know everything that we do is geared into growth. And the way we gear into growth is to make sure that there is investments you know, that we've seen. Because people want new products. And without new products, uh, you know, or the improvements of the products that we have, we're not going to have growth. So that's why, you know, from, from, from our side, when we talk to you know, the National Planning Commission uh, and we talk to other business groupings, we always say that tourism should receive a primary focus. And when tourism receives primary focus, it means that community will benefit too. Because whatever we do for tourism, uh, you know, when, when you know, the five-star hotel is built in Inanda, there's community beneficiation. Mm. There's improvement in, 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 in roads, there's improvement in other things. So we always say that when we do things to benefit tourism, you know, it also benefits the community and therefore everyone you know, becomes a beneficiary. So for us, in order for us to, 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 to have higher impact, we need to become a primary focus. And I believe that in South Africa, when you know, things are changing so fast, we have a beautiful country. Kaiserton is a beautiful province. You know, from the mountains in the Drakensberg, you know, to here in Durban, to the south, and go all the way to the north, we've got a beautiful, beautiful country, we've got a beautiful province, and we need to take advantage of that. There are many countries that don't even have a quarter of what we have. I'm not going to name them, you know, but they do very well. You know, they've got, you know, millions of tourists that goes there every year. And all they offer is probably a desert. We have everything in this country. This province has, has it all. And we need to make sure that we take advantage of that. And if we do that properly through collaboration between public sector and private sector, and we make sure that we, we work together for the benefit of those that are coming behind us, and to make sure that in, in the next 50 years, 
we lay we have laid a foundation that you know Deben is going to be different to what it is today. Mm. Kazakhstan is going to be different. South Africa is going to be different. We want more airlines coming here. We want Chinese tourists to be looking at us and say we want to see what South Africa has to offer. We have it all as a country, as a province, as a city. I think there's a whole lot more that we can achieve. Holding hands together, solving our problems. We've had fair amount of challenges. We need to move fast in solving those challenges. And we, as a as, as a business sector, you know, we will be working with the chamber and and everyone else within the tourism value chain to make sure that we are back to where we are. We are as a, as attractive as ever, you know, as as Durban, as Kazakhstan, as South Africa, and we make sure that we welcome as many tourists as possible. We want to see this place busy. We want to see buses on the streets. We want to see young people, you know, being tour guides, you know, taking people to various attractions across uh, across the, the country and across the province. That's what we want to see. We want to see Chaka Block, King Shaka Airport is busy. We need to upgrade and have another runway. That's what we want to see. Mm. Big dreams for a, a city with a big heart. What I did find surprising in the um, as I went around and interviewed various countries, is we all fighting still for recovery. I found that fascinating that we just on that last percentage of full recovery, I mean, it's taking as long as it's taking, it's fine. And then there's the competition that we're gonna, we have to reach that milestone, then we have to surpass it. Samantha, you know, I, I mean, how does it feel to have to just fight that last leg of recovery post COVID? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's rather exhausting, I must say. But, you know, we keep looking. Uh, we, we have a, a, a saying in, in our organization that, you know, don't keep looking back. Let's look forward. So if you look um, where we've come from, and, I mean, COVID, I think, was devastating for our industry in, in many ways. Um, small business, big business, it didn't di differentiate. And, I mean, I don't think any of us... Um, thought that we'd ever see a day where there was no airplane in the sky, I mean, in the entire world. So, I mean, when we look back, you kind of think, sure, that's where we were and where we are today. Um, we've, made, we've made huge strides forward and we're not there yet. I think it's one of the, 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 the slowest recovering um, industries is, is tourism. Um, it, it's just very labor intensive and it, it is expensive. It's, it's not cheap to put up a hotel, you know, um, and your, your return on investments aren't great um, initially. So, um, but I, I think w it's the last push. And yes, there, there is a lot of competition, but competition's good, right? Because then, you know, you know you've got to, to up your game and you've got to do better. And it also helps us because, you know, we've always done what we've always done. And now you're looking at new ways of doing things and challenging how you used to do things in the past. And I think that's good for our business. Mm -hmm. And um, we, 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 it, it's the people that need to rise up to the challenge. Uh, but the people need backing, financial backing. Um, and, and what I've learned is that it's, it, that's who you bet on. You bet on the jockey that, that, that runs the horse. So, Carlos, uh, do, you, do you see a lot of entrepreneurial jockeys like Pumza? Um, needing to access funds because the money is there, yeah. right? Where are the jockeys? Well, I'm definitely not one. I'm too big to be a jockey. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, South Africa, I, I, I travel regularly and every time I come back, I want to kiss the ground I land back on because we've got so much resilience and so much drive. And when I talk to people overseas and they say, you had this and you had that and you had this, I think they'd be depressed most probably for a couple of years. Yes, we've had COVID, and yes, we, we must find those entrepreneurs coming through the system. But there are people uh, in our industry specifically. South Africa's financial system, the property industry is well regulated. It has got good jockeys that are driving these businesses at the moment. I was very fortunate on Tuesday to be presenting on West End, and the CEO of Club Med um, was talking. And it was quite interesting what he had to say. He said, we could have gone to other places and we came to KwaZulu-Natal. Because we, I don't think Durban can differentiate itself from the province. We are Durban, we are Ikequini, we are KwaZulu-Natal. And he has another great company with great jockeys. And they took a decision to open club meets, first club meet in South Africa. Not in the Western Cape, not in another area. They came to KwaZulu-Natal. 
And the skills are there, but we do need to put some effort also into training, as Samantha mentioned earlier. Mm. And you know, they, they, they do their homework, right? So they know where the best combination is. Um, and and, and Pumza, what is the combination, even for your establishment? What is the right combination of people, experience? How would you, how would you put it together? I think um, in any tourism product, you need a couple of things right. But before you start, uh, you, you need to do your research. Uh, research becomes very important to know exactly how you're going to differentiate your product. Because products can be similar, and if you're not differentiated, you're not going to attract your, or achieve your goals. So a combination of people, um, uh, the, the facility itself uh, needs to, to be at a certain level to achieve, uh, to be on par with your uh, proposition. Um, you also need the community as well as um, the establishments like, uh, or the organizations like Devon Tourism or KZN Tourism to work together. If those four legs don't work together, it will not function. Mm. Thank you so much. I think we, we've, it's been an amazing conversation. We've come to the end of the time allocated to us. Uh, maybe to you, Mr. Mbele, your thoughts on what is it going to take for me to become a Durbanite? <laughs> or what is it going to take for businesses to become Durbanites and for, for individuals to come and enjoy Durban? Yeah, uh, for you, you are already a, a Durbanite. Okay. Uh, you, you have all the qualities of Ubuntu mm -hmm. and what we, we are basically uh, selling is the cultural diversity and all these good things that we have spoken about. Um, so we are saying to, to the people, they, they must come here. This is a place to, to live, work and play. Opportunities are open. We will assist them with the setup that all it takes. Get into that aeroplane, land at King Jaga, look for a Tegwini, uh, the city of Deben offices, we will direct you where to go and you become a Debenite. Done. Signed, sealed. Sealed. Thank you so much. I think um, we've had a very uh, important conversation that encapsulates amazing recovery, that, that encapsulates what a culture means and how one pulls all stops to make sure that businesses can thrive, investors want to invest and people are able to, to gain employment. Well, that is it for the Africa Travel Indaba conversation, specifically on Durban, the warmest place to be. Their value proposition, clear enough, and we have time on our side to see where it goes. So do stay with us, come back. We will be back in 2020, uh, 25 to have the same conversation post the investment into this particular conference. From me, Zanella Morrison, you are watching CNBC Africa. Thank you so much for your time.